it's another week, another theme here on our channel. And I wanted to share with you our construction theme materials. This is a super simple to set up unit for preschool aged children. So I'll start here. I have some books on some of our top shelves. You can notice how the books are open. You can see either some of the pages here on this one or the covers on the books. So everything is nicely on display. And I did that intentionally so that my child or my children can um, become interested and really see what the books are about. This one, Goodnight Construction Site, is a favorite and we tend to read it a lot before bed, but I wanted to leave it out because it matches our theme. And this is a great unit for younger children, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, um, approximately that age. I decorated the shelves with some small manipulatives to give us a little bit um, of a point of interest. So here at the top, I have a scissor, a scissor work. This is a cutting work. So we have their scissors there, and these are construction vehicle photos. And then the child just has to snip along the black. I added this little chest for the snipped pieces to go into. Afterwards we will make it a gluing work where um, she'll save the pieces. She'll save the pieces that she cuts and then we'll glue it onto a piece of paper and make a collage. Here we have uh, three part cards. They're photos of construction vehicles and you can get all of the printables. I'll link them in the description box. There'll be a freebie on my blog. So all of these photos, the child just has to match the photo to the word and then use this as a controlled error if they're reading. My three-year-old, she can't read yet, but she can match the words. And so she will first look at this and then find the matching words, which is a really, really good way to practice visual discrimination and it's super tough. So I only included a few cards here for her. This is accounting work. This is, um, a, number, a set of number cards you can see here we have a photo of an excavator and then three rocks and then you can use that as a control and then the child just practices one-to-one -one correspondence placing one rock on the photo of the rock. And then I also have blank mats with just the numbers that look like the zero with just the numbers and the picture and no rocks, nothing, so they can just put the manipulative on there themselves. Down here, that is a stamping work. So we keep our art supplies right next to our shelves. So my daughter, if she chooses this work with the stamps, she can grab a piece of paper and then stamp the letters into the black ink and then just practice again visual discrimination and letters. I have a couple of consonants in there for her. It's a really simple work that um, that's just great because she really likes it. That's why it's there. Um, this is a painting work. So it, ideally I would have our good construction or construction vehicles out and we would do the painting work with them. But I didn't want to get our good construction vehicles dirty. So I have these older ones and some paint. And then if my daughter chooses that work, and we'll go to right here and grab this long roll of paper and cut off a big old roll. And then we'll put some of this paint into a bowl or some of the, uh, the art supplies on the other side, like I said. And then it's just, uh, she can roll the wheels and the tires of the vehicles into, onto the paint, into the paint and then make a painting using them, the construction vehicles, instead of a paintbrush. It's just an art, a fun artwork, and we would do that on the floor. And then last, we have a matching work. So all it is is photos of construction vehicles and then the child has to match them. So here, these are just photos. You can see here the images more closely. This is a blank mat and then the child has to match it to this photo. It's um, a good visual discrimination work and you can have them do this type of material on the floor and then use a placemat or something like that to denote the space that they're working in. It's a typical um, sort of, a using a mat on the floor is a typical in a Montessori classroom, so that's also what we do here. So that's the matching work of construction vehicles. You can notice I omitted the labels and the word because I really wanted the focus here to be visual uh, discrimination and really paying attention to the details of the vehicles. 
and the word can be a little bit distracting. In Montessori, we tend to be very um, in Montessori we tend to be very clear that this is the focus of the work, and that's exactly what you can see in the matching work. Then moving on to this shelf, so there's more books. This is a Lift the Flap book. You can see it's very cool. Then we have another interesting book. Um, this one isn't all about construction vehicles, but it's a really nice page, so I wanted that open so we can read it together. This is a nuts and bolts work, and again, I love these little chests. They just add such an element of surprise and interest to the child. It's super cute and perfect for little hands. And inside, you see this. So you see they're all different sizes. Some are thicker, some are thinner, and this is a very challenging work because the child has to use their fine motor skills to pick this up, pincer grasp, and then they also have to match it to the right one. So that's quite a challenge. It's a great activity for logic and also for visual perception that the child can really pay attention and has to be very careful um, when choosing the correct match. Here is a work with different variations. I wanted to keep the material up to share with you. So if a child is not writing yet, you can use these cards. You can use them actually in many ways. You can also use them as scissor work. There's different patterns on these lines, and you can have the child write the pattern in the sand, and then for an additional fine motor task, they can place these chickpeas onto the pattern. If they are writing already, then you can use you can use our letter cards. These come in upper and lower case and numbers, or have them write sight words. So they can read the sight word and then make it in the sand, which is another great way to practice reading and memorizing how to write um, how to write sight words because those are exceptions. You can't write them or read them. Um, they're not phonetically spelled words, so they the child just has to memorize how to write them. So using a work where they're writing them with, um, using their fingers rather than just reading. It helps to really um, secure that muscle memory so they'll remember how to spell them later. Now down here is actually not construction site, um, not construction vehicle activities. These are a preview of the Hands-On Kids Activities Club fish theme. So we are testing out some new types of activities for our Hands-On Kids Activity Club members. Um, we're doing a lot more hands-on um, printable free materials and this is just a little peek at our fish theme and my kiddo really 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 liked them so I left them out for her. This is um, a baggie, and in here I have fish and I have some stones. And just to close her eyes and just feel inside of the bag, she has to open it up and feel to see um, to see what's in there. You can see I don't keep my shelves too full. There's only a few activities, typically on each shelf, and then. Um, so that way, my child doesn't get overwhelmed, she can easily see everything there is to do, and then I'll just swap it out more often rather than putting everything out at once because then the more things we have, the more decorations or the more activities even, the less likely she is to use the materials. So I also wanted to show you this is a what the number cards would look like when you print them. If you print the ones without any um, any rocks, any visual one-to-one -one correspondence clue, if you just want them to count it out. And I cut it, cut off the black border, and then I use a corner rounder to make it look um, to remove the black. But you don't have to do that. You can even just leave it like this and present such a work with manipulatives with the rocks. So here on uh, my children's table, I have an invitation to use Play-Doh. Play-Doh. This is a material, a Play-Doh set from Organized Chaos with Kids. It's a lovely, lovely mom-run shop and she creates these gorgeous Play-Doh sets. I used just some of the manipulatives that she has included in her set, so you can see these lovely things and her play-doh just smells so good and this is a vanilla scented 
it's lovely. So this is just an invitation to use those fine motor skills, to use those hand muscles. Actually, the tracing cards, so you can use cards like this, the tracing cards, alongside Play-Doh. You can just select a card with a number, or a, you can just select a line and have the child make that same line from the Play-Doh, and it's a great, great, great way to practice fine motor skills to strengthen hand muscles, which is super, super important for preparing the hand for handwriting. Thank you.